So today is April 15th. April 15th plus 31, that's 36 days plus 5, that's 51. Day 51. So Russia and Putin have been raping the shit out of Ukraine for the last 51 days. 51 days. If your neighbors are getting raped by a gang of thieves, right? Nice, peaceful, nuclear family getting raped by some fucking gang of thieves for 51 days while you just sat there real quiet, while you played your Nintendo, while you made your fucking jokes, while you played with your skateboard and shit. How do you think they would feel? How would you feel if you're, you and yours were getting raped by a gang of thieves and everybody else is just going along as if it was business as usual? I just want to read a couple notes here. Random notes that I got, you know, online, but just about the situation in Russia and Ukraine. So, day 51, day 51 of the rape of Ukraine. Since the February 24th invasion, the ministry said Russian forces were continuing their offensive towards Izium, a city on the Do Donets, Donets, like Donets, Donets River in the Kharkiv region of eastern Ukraine towards Slaviansk and Barvinkove. Slaviansk and Barvinkove, also in the safe province, attempt to storm Mariupol. Do not stop the defenders of the city held a heroic defense for more than 40 days, restraining the overwhelming forces of the R Russian invaders. It is amazing. Mariupol fought for 40 days compared to Kyrgyzstan, which fucking fell the first moment that, oh shit, Russia's here. <laughs> Time for us to go. Time for us to go. I bet you a lot of these fucking piece of shit Americans would just fucking pack up and go too. They got no pride for their fucking homeland. If they ain't fucking oppressing people and hurting people and exploiting people, they don't want to be around here. Attempts to, what, actually, I mean, the police officer, the police in Kirsten just took off. They're supposed to protect and serve, motherfucker. This is actually something that uh, we need to be protected and served from. <laughs> oh, you just going around hurting people? I know. I know. I want police reform. I want police reform. So about Poltava, Poltava Terrence McCracken said his city of Poltava, around 200 miles from Ukraine's capital, Kiev. Kiev, named after King Ki, the Poland, the Polani, the Pollyanna, has been lucky so far in the war. He said that it has not been damaged Poltava has not been damaged. Poltava was, the Battle of Poltava was the reason the Swedish Empire went down. The Swedes are kicking ass and taking names and then fuck the Battle of Poltava no more. So, Poltava, nothing's going on in Poltava. It's about 200 miles from Ukraine's capital, Kiev. It's been lucky so far. It hasn't been damaged. The threats they saw in the early days of the invasion didn't lead to devastation. Many folks don't go to the shelter when there's air raids, apparently, because they think that they're lucky. But there hasn't been any air raids. The guy was in his apartment, Terrence McCracken. They have martial law there in the Zitomir region. The enemy late in the evening fired a missile at an infrastructure facility in Chudnev. Chudnev. So they fired, you know, a missile infrastructure. So a building, an infrastructure facility, just a building. No one was killed or injured. Details are being clarified. In the Poltava region, missiles struck the infrastructure in Mir Horad. In Mir Horad, information on casualties and destruction is being clarified. In Kharkiv, shelling by Russian troops continued last night. And earlier in the day, a large-scale fire broke out in an administrative building, which was extinguished until the evening. In the Kharkiv region, the occupiers fired at... Barvinkove, 17 civilians were injured, four people killed in the past 24 hours. In the Luhansk region, the enemy fired at Lysychansk, Rubizhidny, Sieverodonetsk, Krimina, Novodrozhesk. Ten buildings were damaged in the shelling, one person killed. 21 rescued by state emergency service workers in the Donetsk region. The situation remains tense. The main directions are Avdivka, the Acheritini territory community, Marinka, and Vuleter. 
A number of private houses were destroyed. One civilian was killed and three injured. In the past day in Mariupol, over the past two days, Russian forces have not allowed citizens out of the besieged city. The evacuation from Berdyansk to Zaporizhia continues. In the Kyrgyzstan region, the occupiers are attempting to dig in, shelling neighboring regions from the temporarily occupied territories in the Villages occupied by Russian invaders, the situation remained unchanged. The region is on the verge of a humanitarian catastrophe. Currently, more than 100 settlements in the Kyrgyzstan region are without electric and water supply. Efforts by Russian forces advancing from Izium to capture Slavyansk will likely prove to be the next pivotal battle of the war in Ukraine, which might open up potential routes for Russian forces to cut off. Ukrainian troops in the east and advance more into the Luhansk and Donetsk areas. Furthermore, the report added, if Russian forces are unable to take Slavyansk at all, Russian frontal assaults in Donbass are unlikely to independently break. Slavyansk was a major flashpoint in the war, and the Donbass region in 2014 was briefly held by pro-Russian separatists before they were pushed back by Ukrainian forces. In July of that year, its significance now lies primarily in the fact that it is surrounded on three sides by Russian-held cities, Izium to the north, Luhansk to the east, Donetsk to the south, but lies deeper west in the Donbass region than the two latter regions, blocking Russia's pathways further into Ukrainian territory. Western Ukraine, Western Ukraine is practically free from Russian troops, so is the northeastern region of Sumy, which Ukrainian forces said is under control. Sumy is under control. The war has shifted to the south and most particularly to the east of the country. The Russians are concentrating their forces here with the goal of launching a major offensive in the Luhansk and Donetsk areas of the Donbass region, according to the Institute for the Study of War. In Mykolaiv region, the Russian invaders pretended to be lost, evacuated local residents, and tried to attack the Ukrainian military. At night, Mykolaiv region was again fired upon by Russian missiles, which started a fire in the forest. When guests leave the restaurant, we normally say, have a nice day, they said. This is um, Mykolaiv. But now in Mykolaiv, they just say something, you know, something like glory to Ukraine or we wish you blue skies. We don't say have a nice day anymore. Having, you know, saying have a nice day in this day and age, in this period is stupid, said Polish Chuck 33. Before the Russian invasion of Ukraine at the end of February, Lviv, a historic city just 40 miles from Poland, was a popular European tourist destination. Tourist definition, uh, destination, 2.5 million visitors a year and the biggest jazz festival in Eastern Europe. Now, instead of tourists, there are displaced Ukrainians fleeing the war-torn east of the country. Lviv and its residents are learning to live with what most now believe will be many months of conflict, if not years. Several Russian airstrikes have targeted infrastructure here, including a rocket attack on a military training Base last month that killed more than 30 people. Air raid sirens warning of Russian fighter jets breaching the airspace sound several times a day. This small city, though, it's still far from the act of fighting that has devastated entire cities in the east of Ukraine. So... Lviv. So Lviv did get, you know, attack. 30 people were killed. It was a military training base. I guess people are like excusing it. But 30 people were killed in Lviv. I want to give an update on Yemen and Palestine too. I've been very pissed about the continuing fucking genocide of Yemen and the occupation of Palestine. 